Galactic sentient broadcast. Target, planet Earth. Begin invasion in three, two, one. Hey, greetings invaders. My name is Scott. This is Book Invasion. I'm on the road today. Wait, am I going to work? No, I'm not going to work. Our office is still closed. I'm picking up dinner. Uh, but I thought I'd jump in and do a quick uh, on-the-road reviews for uh, The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. This was a book club read with a new book club called Paperback, Hardback, or Take It Back Book Club, hosted by Ben over at Ben's Blurb. He invited me to, to partake uh, in reading this with him, which we did. Uh, we did a mid-month kind of live show on his channel and I wasn't able to make the kind of end of the month final thoughts. So here I am. This is me today, driving in my car, giving you my review of The Luminous Dead. So I'd heard a bunch of good things and praise about this book, um, that, it, that it was just kind of very gripping and the story was great and all that kind of stuff. It's got a bit of a sci-fi twist, uh, it's set in the future, and it's the, you know, the horror elements, so I thought it was, you know, kind of like a dead space type of thing. But no, really this book did not meet any of my preconceived notions about what the story would be, which is good and not good. It's all about the kind of expectations when coming into a subjective type of review. So our story follows Jire. Jire is, is a woman who's looking to start cave diving. Um, it, it didn't sound like she had a lot of practice or training. She's kind of an amateur, but um, you know, somehow she's just ultimately super good at it. So she gets hired by this company to go to some undisclosed location cave for some undisclosed uh, reasons. And she gets paid a boatload of money, so she just does it. Now, these cavers are, um, they work with handlers, so to speak, which are the people on the surface, kind of with a map, and who's got some kind of layout of the cave somehow, and can guide them through, and talk them through um, how to navigate things like that, where their checkpoints should be, how much progress they should be making. So they each have handlers. So Jire's handler is named M. Now in the, in the beginning of the book, there's a very mismatch about the, the handler and, and caver relationship. Like you feel like there's not a lot of support there. Things are kind of shady. Um, but as the story progresses, we get to know who that handler is. Now, as the book went on, and as I had gotten through halfway, there wasn't really a lot of things happening. The second half of the book, I think it picks up a little bit, but what the book does well is give you that claustrophobic tension. It gives you that desperation that you kind of feel when you're isolated and alone in a cave under the earth with no one to talk to you but some mysterious voice on the other end of your communications channel. And when you're going through that, and if you start to doubt, or if you start to have any doubts about the people controlling the mission and what their motives are, then things can go south real quick. And that's kind of what what happens in this story. So now in the futuristic setting that this story takes place in, you have these, these suits who can be, who have catered gel, and you plug in a port into your stomach and your intestines so that you can shoot in these little uh, food pods and shifts and stick them in a slot and that gives you um, your nutrients while you are cave diving and so there's some a visor that has futuristic kind of filters in it night vision and heat vision and x-ray whatever kind of things all built into your visor and your handlers can kind of control that from where they're at so that they can keep their um, divers safe but in the middle point of the story, questions start to arise, the trust erodes, um, Jire doesn't know who she's dealing with, she thinks there's something shady and shifty going on, 
um, and so she tries to do what she can in her the small bits of control that she can manage to um, turn this around and get an upper hand on those who are controlling this whole mission. So what I really wanted the story to do was to give a, a, a bit of more of a punch, a bit more of a wow, a bit more of the, uh, you know, the grittiness uh, that horror has. I wanted some, some more tension. It, it felt like there was a lot of teasing of things. Like the book does a really good tease on where things could go. And as I talked to ben, ben about it in our uh, live monthly check-in things, like there are a lot of avenues that this book could have gone to with these um, these quote-unquote tunnel layers under the cave. Um, and the motives and the other previous encounters with this handler, there's a lot of things that could have been unraveled and it could have, I think, had a bigger impact on the story as a whole. But what I ended up feeling throughout the book and throughout the last part of the book was just a minor, like, oh, okay, okay, this is moving, things are shifting, but it didn't really have that pop. And so it was a bit, not lackluster, but it was a bit uneventful as I had gotten through um, the end of the book. Not to ruin it for everybody, but your mileage may vary. Other people may like it. But I think all in all, I liked the story, I enjoyed it. There were a lot of things and places and branches that I, I wanted the story to go to that would have been like, ooh, that would have been great, like this would have been good, but it kind of stayed in the safe zone um, throughout and was like, you know, it could have gotten really crazy or it could have gotten really uh, action-packed on this part, but it kind of stayed in, in very a vanilla feeling I got throughout the book. But the tension was there, the deception and the, the personality conflicts was there. That was really well done in the writing of that, that, um, and the writing was really well done in that. But I wanted, I felt like I wanted more out of this. I wanted it to be a little bit more. So all in all, I'll give it maybe three and a half out of five stars. I liked it. It was good. I'll round up to four stars. How, how's that? We don't do half stars. But I really like the sci-fi element, I really like the setting. I would have liked to know more about the world above the caves and how it kind of got there. All we really know about is kind of these corporations that do these minings. Um, the, the tunnel airs, I wanted more of that piece. The mines bending uh, twistiness of that. I wanted that to go a little bit further and explore and have a few more twists and turns there. But to me, the book was okay. It wasn't super, it wasn't great, but for I guess, the debut, the tension was there. I just felt like it was a little bit too safe. I wanted a little bit more of a power punch to it. So anyway, but I would recommend that you check it out. You may have different viewpoints. I'm not going to try to dissuade anyone from reading any type of books. But those are my thoughts on The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. Sorry, my, I'm driving into the sun on the way home from getting dinner. And it's not the best. But thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.